Good evening, everyone. The United States had a busy day today attacking Iraq, and the war hasn't formally begun. But in the south and in the north and in the western desert, the U.S. was bombing Iraqi assets the U.S. command wants out of the way before the big push begins. Throughout Iraq tonight, most certainly in Baghdad, the next phase for millions of people is going to be very violent. It's been 20 years since U.S. forces invaded Iraq, a war zone I traveled to dozens of times during those years, and I've seen the toll the war took on U.S. service members. For many, their time overseas led them to continue a life of public service back home. Some 35 Iraq War veterans serve in Congress, and I sat down with two of them, Senator Tammy Duckworth and Congressman Dan Crenshaw, to reflect on the war two decades later. Senator Tammy Duckworth is reminded of the sacrifices she has made every day. She was one of the first women to fly combat missions in the Iraq War and one of the first grievously injured. When a rocket propelled grenade pierced her Black Hawk helicopter in 2004, she lost both her legs and badly injured her right arm. I thought I deserved to lose my legs. I hurt my crew. I didn't do my job. I failed as a pilot, and I had not served honorably. I had not served according to my training. Um, sorry. And uh, my, dad, my husband caught me crying in my hospital bed, and when he realized I was awake, and, and he said, what's wrong? And I said to him, um, you know, I could barely talk, and I said, I crashed the aircraft. It's my fault. He said, no, you didn't. And he said, no, you landed the aircraft. And I sort of thought, really? I've been fine ever since. That was more important than anything, knowing you didn't cause it. Knowing that I did my job when the chips were down, as I was trained, as an officer, I didn't let them down, and as a pilot, I didn't let my crew down. When President George W. Bush announced the invasion of Iraq... These are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. Duckworth didn't support the reasons behind the war, but never hesitated going into combat. I was proud to go because it was my job as a soldier to obey all lawful orders, and this was a lawful order. And was your sacrifice, was this nation's sacrifice worth it? My sacrifice is for the Constitution of the United States, and that is always worth it. Congressman Dan Crenshaw, a former Navy SEAL, lost an eye in combat in Afghanistan in 2012, but had previously deployed to Iraq. When you look back on the decision to go into Iraq mm -hmm. that George Bush made, mm -hmm. what do you think? It's a complicated situation. It's super easy to look back in time and say, well, I could have done this better. 2020 hindsight's a wonderful thing. Mistakes were made. Was the entire thing a mistake? I don't think you'll ever know because you can't talk about what the counterfactual is. Crenshaw was in Iraq from 2008 to 2010, watching as the U.S. began to draw down troops. By 2010, I'm leading a platoon in Ramadi. And, um, but it's much the same as it was in 2008. There's, there's, we, we did run into some say, say kinetic warfare at times, but it was nothing like 2006. And there's certainly nothing like what I faced in Afghanistan in 2012. But three years later, ISIS swept in, filling the gap left behind by the U.S. 2014, mm -hmm. we're back because yep. of ISIS. You think that was pretty easy to see? It was, yeah, I think it was painfully obvious. Again, all of these bad guys we were tracking, they were always in Syria, always in the eastern side of Syria, right on the border. Uh, that was their safe haven, right? It was the equivalent of Pakistan for the Taliban in Afghanistan. So. Pretty obvious that they were laying in wait. Pretty obvious that it's American presence that was, that was keeping them there. You know, we were, in a, we were in a pretty stable place by the end of 2011. We, we weren't investing a massive amount of resources. And that should have been a lesson. Both Crenshaw and Duckworth say there are many lessons to learn about war from their own experiences. We better know what the parameters of the fight are going to be and what the end goal of the fight will be so that we're not stuck there for decades with no off-ramp. War sucks, uh, which is why you should try and prevent it. You don't prevent it by being weak and letting people bully you around. You don't prevent it by, by waiting until the last minute to act. And despite the outcome of these wars, their own injuries, and those that thousands of veterans still endure, they both remain immensely proud of their service. I look back at my military experience and think it's the best experience of my life. It's a time in my life that I, I don't regret for a second. 
even, even with the missing eye. We're an all-volunteer force, and we go to do, the, to do the bidding of the United States. And I don't want anyone to feel sorry for us. I don't want anyone to still feel sorry for me because of my injuries. I chose to do what I did. Like a lot of soldiers, there's a part of me that, you know, um, if you ask me to do it again, I'd do it all over again because I gained so much more than I ever gave up. Our thanks to all of our veterans and their families. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.